Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. This video, we're going to be starting things out with Epic 2, that's right. The next generation of Epic processors has supposedly had its specifications leaked out onto the internet. And how powerful is it? Well, it has double the number of cores of the previous generation of Epic chips. Then we're going to have a roundup of the GTX 1070 Ti slash Ti uh, graphics cards reviews and go into my opinions on the performance of the next um, iteration of the GP104 core. So, these rumours were actually originally sent to me by Joe. Uh, via an email, so thanks very much to him. Now, uh, he linked me to networkworld.com, and the source of these rumours comes from Canard PC, which is a French hardware site. Now, to be fair, they have a pretty good track record of accuracy, and in fact have actually leaked several things with Ryzen and Threadripper in the past, so I'm not going to say that these reports are accurate, uh, as in 100%, but I wouldn't be surprised if there is some truth to them. Anyway, so starting things out with the uh, stuff which is remaining the same. Memory speeds do get a subtle bump to 3200 MHz, but it's still going to remain as 8-channel DDR4 memory. Also, we'll still see 128 PCIe lanes, but let's be honest, I don't think we need uh, uh, more than that at this point in time. The big changes, however, will be level 3 cache and the number of processor cores. So currently, Epic has up to 32 processor cores, uh, 64 threads total, of course, if you're using SMT. What about Epic 2? Well, it doubles that. So we're going to be seeing 64 cores and up to 128 threads when you take into account SMT, which is absolutely gargantuan. Now, considering that Xeon at the moment, uh, top of the line Xeons have about 22 cores or whatever, uh, definitely has fewer PCIe lanes, obviously Intel will probably be releasing uh, updated SKUs in the future to help close the gap, but still, it's going to be interesting to see how um, Intel responds to this, if it's true. What about level 3 cache then? Well, currently... Epic 2, uh, sorry, Epic 1, excuse me, has 64 megabytes of level 3, which is, well, let's just be honest, it's not exactly piddly. Well, we're going to be seeing four times this amount, 256 megabytes of level 3 cache, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now, obviously, the fact that these chips are supposedly in production, and let's be honest, there's probably a successor to Epic being produced, whether these figures are accurate or not, we can almost certainly imagine that AMD are working on a successor to the Epic design, because let's face it, they're getting pretty damn uh, good exposure with Epic at the moment, and there's a lot of interest in the industry. But it's probably going to be about 12 to 18, maybe even 24 months from the initial release of Epic to this next generation processor, because anything faster than that would be, well, somewhat unrealistic. What is quite interesting is that at a recent event, uh, Joe actually emailed me this, and he said that he was actually talking to one of the uh, AMD guys, one of the reps, and the actual representative, when Joe was asking him about the specifications of Epic, the guy actually said that he had, um, sorry, Epic had 64 cores. Now, there's a couple of ways you can interpret this. One, the PR guy just simply misspoke and was actually thinking of threads in his head, especially if he's been on his feet all day and talking to a whole bunch of people. He screwed up and just accidentally said the wrong specifications, period. Or the other option, C, is that he was thinking of Epic 2 and just accidentally misquoted. At the end of the day, we can't actually say for sure. We can only wait and see what type of specifications this chip actually has. We can almost invariably assume that it's going to have an updated version of Ryzen uh, inside of it, because let's face it, it's not going to just have the same chips that we have now. So it's going to be very, very cool, nevertheless. And I think people working in server farms, or perhaps designing things for HPC usage, is definitely going to be very interested in this processor. 
So, what about the GTX 1070 Ti? It is still using GP104. Very quick rundown of the specifications. The boost clock is 1683 megahertz. It has 2,432 stream processors, 19 SMs, or another way to look at it is one fewer than the GTX 1080. 64 ROPs, but the big difference, of course, is while it still has 8 gigabytes of memory and a 256-bit bus, the memory is using GDDR5 and it runs at just 8 gigabits per second, so it does look indeed like 8 gigabits is the speed and not 9 or anything other than that. I'm going to have a very quick rundown of some of the performance numbers and I'll link all of this stuff in the video description. I'm going to give you my opinion first, though, so this card has a couple of issues, but a couple of positives. The issues, it's very expensive at 430 US dollars. Now, we can argue until the cows come home about pricing and graphics cards. The main issue I have with this is that you can, certainly on sales anyway, if you're lucky, get a 1080. That's not that much more expensive than this. And it's also more expensive in many cases than the Vega 56. The other issue with this card is because that NVIDIA are essentially reining in any factory overclocks, so they can't, for example, MSI or Asus release a card which has a stock overclock of like 200 megahertz above normal, it really comes down to the user. Now, yes, of course, that means that you can overclock the card, but it just adds a little bit of extra complexity. Though, on the flip side, you could also say that this improves pricing because it means that the spread of difference, I mean, if you were look at, to look at the, the low-end GTX 1080 prices and the high-end GTX 1080 prices, the, the spread of price difference is absolutely profound. And you can have 200 or even 300 US dollar price difference between the base model and the more expensive model. Another slight problem I have with the 1070 Ti's existence is that it doesn't really do much to the pricing of the 1070 which now is just in a weird position. And I do feel that uh, in some ways, a 1060 tie might have actually been a better card than the 1070 tie. Because once again, depending upon the model, there's about 100 to 200 US dollar price difference between the 1060s and the 1070s. So let's say the median of about 150. But enough about that. What about performance? Well, um, we're going to start out things with BitTech and a couple of their results. I'm not going to talk about 1080p results because, quite frankly, that is just absolutely pointless with a card like this. Uh, we'll start out with BitTech and Battlefield 1. Uh, 1440p, DX12, Ultra Settings. The 1070 Ti Founders Edition uh, will obviously refer purely to the average frame rates because it makes things easier. We're getting 71 frames a second. Now compare this to a, let's say, Vega 56, which gets 76 frames a second. So Vega 56 does have a slight advantage here, which isn't too surprising because a lot of the time Battlefield does slightly um, do better and also slight misspelling there of Battlefield on BitTech, on uh, BitTech.net, but whatever. Uh, the EVGA GTX 1080, which is for the win, so it does have a slight overclock, does pretty well, however. At 2160, or if you prefer 4K, you're looking at 39 frames a second and 40 on the Vega 56. So ideally, of course, something like a GTX 1080 just can't quite cut the mustard when it comes to 4K gaming. And of course, because the 1080 tie, sorry, 1070 tie is a bit slower. No surprises, it just can't quite cut the mustard either. On Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, 61 frames a second for the minimum, but the average is 69. He he he. Vega 56 is slightly outpaced here by just a couple of frames a second, and it does slightly lose out to the Vega 64, which is hitting 75 frames a second. Hardware Canucks and Gears of War 4. Uh, certainly actually one of my favourite games of the Xbox anyway, slightly off topic. The GTX 1070 I find very interesting compared to the 1080 and the Founders Edition of the 1070 Ti. So, uh, once again, looking at the average, 92 frames a second for the 1080 compared to 85.5 for the 1070 Ti. 
Whereas the 1070 vanilla just gets 77 frames a second. The basically the 1070 tie is much closer. And in tech 2160p, well, guess what? Go on, take a guess. The 1080 66 frames a second, very close, of course, to the 1070 Ti, which gets 64 frames a second, so two frames per second difference. And almost, I would consider a startling difference between the Ti and the vanilla. We're looking once again at 64 frames a second for the Ti, compared to 52.5 for the vanilla GTX 1070. And of course, this is definitely once again pitting the 56 and the tie almost neck and neck um i think tom's hardware and rise of the tomb raider are also a pretty good example so the 1080 once again average frame rate gets 60 frames per second on the gtx 1080 um at 1440p whereas on the other hand vega 56 manages 48 frames per second now they are using the msi tie titanium 8 gigabyte model and there is an mm, let's say six frames per second difference between the 56 and the, uh, the 1070 tie but once again the major results uh, come in between the 1070 the 1070 tie and the 1080 so long story short the 1070 tie is a very good purchase if you can get it at a very decent price and if you can't get a vanilla 1080 at a cheap price and you want to go with nvidia if you don't give a crap between nvidia and amd i would personally just say go with either nvidia uh, a 1070 ti or a vega or a 1080 or go with a 56. now to me i've said this multiple times i think that the 56 is a much better buy than the 64 and once again, I'm going to do the plug that if you overclock the Vega 56, especially the HPM2 memory, which to be honest is very simple, there's a tweaking video on the channel if you want to go check it out, you can get 1080 performance quite happily. I will say, however, that the overclocking of the 1080, um, yeah, the 1080 and the 1070 tie really start to separate one another. But that is to say that the 1070 tie does overclock fairly well. So, for example, going back to hardware Canucks, if you overclock the card, the tie just about, just about, pits the 1080 to the post by just a couple of frames per second. Now, do remember that these are reference clocks. So, um, that means that the GTX 1080 is the standard edition. There's no tweaking to it. It just basically is, you know, if you were to get a basic model and just plonk it straight into your PC. And also Doom 1440p, you guessed it, a couple of frames per second between the tie and the 1080. So the conclusion is pretty much what we all suspected all along. The card is a pretty damn good card, there's nothing wrong with it. My major concern is that it's very close to 1080 base model pricing. Personally, if I could get a 1080 for this price or around this price, I would. Um, in fact, uh, this was a couple of months or several months ago, I actually picked up a 1080, um, uh, an MSI uh, 1080, which was essentially the reference model uh, from Amazon, and it was actually on sale, and I picked it up about the same price, maybe even slightly cheaper than the 1070 Ti is going for in the UK. So it is what it is. So, you know, there's definitely that to take into consideration. But obviously, graphics card prices are going ballistic at the moment. NVIDIA obviously just did not want to cannibalize any 1080 sales. They, well, they were very much in danger of doing so. And that's really why they didn't put 9 GPPS uh, RAM in this. Very small, quick update. We finally have a 1080 tie that has been tracked down to us and has been sent to us. So for those who are not regular viewers or have missed a couple of updates from us, Basically, we were sent Threadripper. Uh, we actually have had it for a couple of weeks now, but we were asked to not really do a review because we were also being sent a 1080 tie. Unfortunately, a company, which I won't name for legal reasons, literally, uh, from what I'm being told by MSI, literally stole the 1080, uh, 1080 tie uh, during transit. So we are sent out another one, and we've got it now. 
The only issue is that both Amy and I have been absolutely battered with something or another. She's got one thing. She's got uh, tonsillitis. And, well, I've just had this really horrible flu type of thing for the last several days as well. Which meant that I have pretty much not been able to even get out of bed. So that's been fun. But, hey, hopefully this weekend we can start actually working again. Because it's been a little bit frustrating, to say the least. Not been ideal. But with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff. Thanks everyone for the support, likes, comments, and all of that stuff. Uh, sorry I've been a bit crap on the Facebook messages. It's just, to be honest with you, I've not really felt like getting out of bed at all. So, uh, yeah. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.